So is all baby babbling the same? And the answer is no, in fact. Um, so besides the fact that once we get to really vocal babbling, uh, as opposed to manual babbling with deaf children, but with vocal babbling, that differs between deaf and non-deaf children. But even, even children who are hearing, their babbling is influenced by the language that they hear. And so how, how do we know this, right? So one way to do this is to uh, see what your adults of those languages are able to discriminate. So what they did in uh, this uh, study from 84 is they recorded the babbling of babies who are learning to speak different languages like French, Arabic, Chinese, and English. And then they played those babbles for the native speakers of French, Arabic, Chinese, and English. And they wanted to see if the native speakers of these languages can identify which baby's babble is actually from their language. So asking, say, a French mom to choose between a recorded Arabic baby babble and a recorded French baby babble, right? Like which one? And it turns out um, that recordings of eight-month-old babblings can be recognized by language. The babies are, are definitely babbling the sounds uh, that are tuned to their specific language that they're trying to learn. And a more recent study from 2016 found that 8, 10, and 12 month olds can be recognized by language, uh, though only really when the babblings are more word-like as opposed to just streams of sound, right? But there's definitely something there where the babies are tuning their, their babbles to the language that they're acquiring. Now you can also do a little bit more uh, precise analysis and see if the, the acoustic features, the, the language features, phonetic features, uh, in those babbles match the features of the language the baby is learning. So for example, they can determine which vowels and consonants and other features appear in the baby's babbles and how frequently they appear, right? So which ones and how frequently, and compare those distributions, right, of which features and how frequently those features appear to the target language's features. And so for example, it turns out the Japanese and French words contain many more nasal sounds than Swedish and English words. So nasal sounds are, are consonants like n and m, uh, but all in n, but also uh, in French, for example, you'll have nasal vowels, which I can't actually produce. Japanese has these kinds of sounds too, right? So more of these sorts of sounds. And Japanese and French babbles contain more nasal sounds than Swedish and English babbles, right? So the babbles are matching the features and the, and the frequency of these features uh, to the language, right, that they're actually picking up. Uh, and for example, if we look back at uh, Mandarin Chinese, which uses tone-like pitches to distinguish meaning. So again, something we talked about in an earlier podcast is if you have the word cat, you, in English you can say cat, 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 right? Those all have different pitches, different contours, different prosody, if you will, different tones. But they still in English mean the same word, doesn't change the word form. And this is not at all true for Mandarin. So if you take the word ma, and I can't do this at all right, so just trust me that this is sort of a, a physical, visual representation of what the tone is doing. So that you have a flat tone versus you have a rising tone versus you have a dip and then, and then a rise and then versus a straight down. These all actually mean four different words, right? It's as different as if I said cat, bat, dat, mat, right? Like you're completely changing what that word form is. But in Mandarin, it's on the basis of these tones, like right? these tone-like pitches, right? So Mandarin Chinese uses these and Mandarin babbles also use these tone-like pitches, and English babbles don't. Right? So this is another example of the babies matching the babbling features to the target language that they're learning. And, uh, and interestingly, if you go even younger, it turns out, again, based on this is a pitch language, even Mandarin Chinese newborn cries carry the tonal contours of Mandarin, right? So that's not even babbling. I mean, this is before we even get to babbling, but those tonal contours also appear. Right, and so you know, really, really early babies are, are tuning, right, what their output is to the sounds that they have heard up until that point. 